So today we will continue our lecture on uh, chapter four in circuit theorems because last week we have learned about Norton theorems and also we have learned about Tevlin theorems and today and we will look at why we are doing that why this Norton and theorem is very useful tools for us in order to uh, in order to simplify our our analysis on circuit theorems. One of the reason is because of maximum power transfer. So, so I hope at the end of the class, uh, you guys should be able to understand the connection and the interchangeability between Tevin and Norton theorems. Eh? So, Tevin and Norton theorems, we have learned last time in terms of Norton resistance and uh, Tevlin resistance is actually the same. Uh, only in Norton, it's, it is, we change the circuit into a one ideal carbon source, while in Tevlin, we change the circuit into one ideal voltage source. So from here, using these two techniques, actually what we like to know is to determine the maximum power transfer. And we would like to understand also how the application of maximum power transfer is needed. So in principle, uh, Tevlin and Norton theorems want to achieve the same goal and in order to reduce the complexity of circuits. And once this simplified circuit has been obtained, obtained and it can interchange each other, I think we earlier explained a little bit last time using the source transformation technique. So here you can see the voltage tevinin and R tevinin is interchangeable to the value of I norton and R norton, which is R norton and R tevinin is equal. And the V tevinin, how to calculate the I norton from I norton is I norton times VIR. Then you will get the tevinin value. Same goes to if you have the tevinin voltage and then you would like to calculate the norton, you just calculate the uh, I, uh, I, I equal V over R, okay? So let's say in examination, you are required to do uh, Tevinin with uh, simplifications, right? And then at some stage, you are not so sure, is it the correct one or not? Actually, if you familiarize at that point, if you uh, feel it's much more easier for you to do the uh, Norton analysis, then you can use Norton analysis in order to check back the value of Tevinin that you have calculated. Because using this uh, interchangeability possibility, uh, you can determine the I Norton value and then convert it into Tevinin. So sometimes students cannot, uh, cannot really uh, uh, difficult to find what is the real voltage of the terminal AB so they can use the Norton technique in order to validate uh, the calculation when they try to do the Tevinin analysis. Okay? That's one way you can do it in checking your work inside the doing examinations. So in circuit design analysis, engineers can use either tool in Tevinin or Norton to determine the simplified equivalent circuits. Since it can change later on, so this technique will help the, determine the maximum power transfer in a second. Why? Let's, let us go to the maximum power, power transfer definition. What is actually maximum power transfer? So for any power source, the maximum power transfer from the power source to the load is when the resistance of the load is equal to or equivalent to the input resistance of power source. In a, in a nutshell, we can say the R input or the R value of uh, circuit A is equal to the R load. And this R load, uh, this R input is the one that we have calculated the Tevinin and the R, R Nortons. Okay. So we can say that this R input is equal to R Tevinin and R Norton. So the process of making, the process used to make RL is equal to RN is what we call as an impedance matching. If you 
look at the uh, cables. Uh, for example, try to let's try to find antenna cables. So you can see here, when you try to look for a cable, they always mention the value of resistance, the, the, the impedance, right? In this case, it is a 550 ohms impedance. So in order to get, uh, in order to ensure you get the maximum power transfer, then you will ensure your circuitry also have the 50 ohms of resistance during operations what we call as a uh, input. So it's always uh, speaker cables. Same goes to the speakers. And your speaker resistance, right? So when you buy a speaker, hidden speaker, For example, in this case, you will see it has a four ohms of resistance of the speaker. This, this means this is the load of the, the four ohms is the load. So that in order to have a very good uh, maximum power transfer from the, your amplifier, you need to mesh it up this speaker. Let's say your power ampli amplifier this here is mentioned the output is eight ohms so that you can be here, they, they, they tell you how to make a series of connection resistors uh, or connection of load in the form of resistor or in, in the form of speaker, which is each of it is four ohms, four ohms, and you have the eight ohms. Right now, your amplifier and also your speaker has the same value matching. So you will get a maximum power transfer from your amplifier okay so for those who have their own cars and would like to uh you know you young young people always like to modify their, their stereo system inside the car so you need to check what is your amplifier provide in terms of uh, the internal resistance so if it's state eight ohms in order to get that maximum value of your amplifier of 50 watt then you need to have a Eight ohms also load, which means the eight ohm speakers. So I think this uh, website shows you how you can. Uh, so if you have eight ohm speakers and eight ohms uh, output impedance of it, then you will get maximum power transfer. This is how you you do the maximum power transfer. Uh, why it is important to know the inputs and why it is important to match the loading. So this impedance matching, the RL, is equal to uh, our input or our tavernin, which is can be obtained by using tavernin or Norton theorems. Tavernin and Norton theorems. So how we can uh, justify or prove this? So we know power is equal V squared uh, v load squared over R load. So in this case, RL uh, over RL plus R tevenin uh, using this uh, circuitry. So you have RS here and then or the R tevenin and then you have the V load uh, or the R load. So in order to get the value of power load in, in, in the load, uh, we will use V tevenin over R tevenin plus RL squared times RL. So if we plot yeah, the value of resistance, the load resistance uh, from zero to let's say, in this case, it's a 50, thevenin, uh, 50 ohms. So if we plot, then we get the load resistant power. The smaller resistance, which is far away from the thevenin of uh, 50 ohms, will give you a oh, sorry, slightly lower power output. Okay, so let's say you have one, one volt, you put one volt here, 
the R terminin is uh, 50 ohms and you have the RL is 1 ohms. So, fifth, uh, five, 1 over R terminin plus uh, 50 plus 1, 51 times 1, so you will get this amount. As you increase the value of the resistance, the load resistance, you will get more power output until it reaches the Tavernin resistance, equivalent to Tavernin resistance. Here at 50 volt, I'm sorry, here at 50 volt of load resistance, then you will reach the 5 milliwatt of power output absorbed by the load. Okay. So absorbed by the load. And then if you put more load resistance, then the power will not anymore. It will be reduced after, after that. So as you can see, it's like a sweet spot. If for those who are playing tennis, then you know that you, ha you have to find a sweet spot in order to hit the ball in the right way. And the sweet spot is really very small area in your rackets. So same goes to here. This 50 ohm or the uh, load of 50 ohm, which is equivalent to our cabinet of 50 ohms, is the sweet spot for the maximum power transfer. Prior or after to that, then the value of uh, power output will be reduced significantly. Okay, so it is important well, in many applications. Uh, I think we just uh, like I showed just now uh, in the application of speaker. Yeah. So you need to have a, a similar similar speaker. Here, I think this uh, website will show you. Let's try to look for it. So make sure if you buy your stereo system or amplifier system for your gaming uh, computer, you need to set it, uh, check the, your sound card, what is the speaker, and then what is the, the speaker impedance, and also the power output your amplifier. So look, let's look at this. Uh, as you can see here. So you need to choose your the right value of your speaker. So speaker, walaupun dia tak nampak macam uh, electronic component, the electronic component kan, then it has resistance inside. And this resistance in value ni mesti sama dengan power amplifier awak ataupun your uh, penguat awak. So if it's 8 ohm and you put an 8 ohms, then you get a as a weighted value of 50 watt here. Kalau you tak put it and you will get a lesser than that. Eh? So, so if you have a higher, you see here, if you have a higher uh, resistance of your speaker, then you need to put this as a parallel because 16 times uh, parallel to 16 will give you the 8 ohms. And, and still you get a uh, speaker with the 50 uh, watt. The total output will over 50 watts. So, So that's uh, in terms of application. So I can show you. So for those, uh, this is one of the 
a model that I helped to develop when I was working uh, with Panasonic last time, SA SE Android. So this is my very first model as a chief uh, development uh, product development as a young engineer at that time. So as you can see, this amplifier output is weighted at six ohm. Okay, six ohm uh, for each channel. So if you buy this kind of uh, home theater system, you need to find the speaker that has the same value in order to get those 100 watts of power output as advertised before. Okay, So this is the value that we have set. Uh, we as engineer determine the value uh, of the speaker for each channel or, or each line. So in this case, we have a uh, six, uh, two, four, and six. Yes, six channels, uh, five for surround and one for uh, surround back and also subwoofer. So these are one of the example. That's why uh, I always stress into the, the what does it mean by the power maximum power transfer calculation. So it will usually use in the antenna calculation or antenna determination in your handphones, right? So your handphone have their own antennas. So it is important to have a very good high matching resistance value so that you get the maximum uh, power from your antenna and you get a very good connection. Same goes to the uh, audio systems. So the speaker as the load in this case, that's why now you can see clearly uh, example of loading is also like a speaker, a lamp, and also uh, yeah, the one that we we'll always label as a circuit B, right? So dalam, dalam uh, Tavernin or Norton, we always say this is circuit A and this is circuit B. So the circuit B is always the, the load side. And the load side is, for example, as a speaker or antennas. So... So when de developing new circuit for a known application, we optimize the power transfer by designing the circuit to have an input resistance close to the load resistance. So engineers need, need to be to bear in mind and what, what value that should have. So when selecting a source uh, to a power a circuit, one of the selection criteria is to match the input impedance and to the load resistance. So selection of wire is also important. In selection of wire, for example, you have antenna wires is designed to match a 75 ohms load. And then you have coaxial cable is designed to act like a 50 ohm load. So coaxial cable. Tahu what? Coaxial cable apa? Uh, Google. And look for coaxial cables. Okay. We have the time for it. So here are the example of coaxial cables. Highly insulated signals. You have a copper mesh outside and then you have the copper wire as a core. So these are example of coaxial cable. So signal line to be in because the copper layer outside is for uh, grounding purpose. So you have very minimum noise used when you are using this cable. Eh? And typically it will be used as your antenna. So itu ada cable harganya 101 meter, ada cable harganya 20 ringgit saja 1 meter. Adalah sebab itu. Perbezaannya sebab quality. Eh? For the, because of the quality of the cables. So it is important that resistance of the wire that runs to the speaker also very low or the power will be dissipated in the wire rather than used to create sound. So that's why they like to have a even copper to camera. Eh? So they like to have a like a gold cable or gold plated cable line. For best audio quality, the input impedance of the circuit connected to the speaker or microphone should be equal to the 
resistance of the speaker or my microphone. So that will wrap up our chapter chapter four. Right? In circuit theorems, so you have learned uh, Norton, you have learned Thevenin, and finally you have learned uh, what does it mean, what, what is the purpose of maximum power transfer, and these are the things yeah, that you will you will apply later on uh, or and now currently you have the knowledge in order to to, to do the calculation or analysis for the circuit.